Madhu, and the topic is Cuba. And Dr. Madhu, I think the uh, last time that we uh, uh, spoke in reference to this, uh, we were talking about uh, some of the uh, medical advantages you mm -hmm. uh, indicated and, 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 and as a prelude to uh, talk about some of the uh, problems that Cuba might have. Mm -hmm. But let's say some additional, make some additional mm -hmm. statements in reference to medicine in Cuba. Yeah. yeah, like I said, you know, Cuba has one of the best medical you know, systems in the world today. Uh, in terms of AIDS, like we've we'll been talking about, mm -hmm. Cuba exports, you know, one of the best HIV AIDS vaccines to most of the third world countries. In fact, most of the Latin American countries buy their HIV AIDS vaccines from Cuba. Uh, in terms of percentage of those infected by AIDS, Cuba has probably the lowest, you know, in the whole world. When this HIV AIDS came to Cuba, to the Castro, you know, quarantine mm -hmm. the first those who were identified initially, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to the island of Pines, mm -hmm. you know, they were quarantined. Then he made sure everybody had to be tested and mm -hmm. checked out. And then they moved there and started manufacturing, you know, HIV AIDS vaccines. Mm -hmm. So that today, countries like Venezuela, Bolivia, you name it, Mozambique, Angola, a lot of them import their HIV AIDS vaccines from Cuba. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of eyesight, mm -hmm. Cuba has one of the best as, as we speak. Right now, there are thousands of people from a lot of South American countries sitting in Havana waiting for their eyesight to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, glaucoma and all this. Yes, Cuba has one of, one, of, one of the best. So in terms of medicine, they have, you know, achieved mm -hmm. a very, very, you know, very big, mm -hmm. big feat mm -hmm. in, in that country. We don't hear much about not, it. Not at all. Yeah. No, we don't hear anything about it as a matter of fact. But when President Carter went to, to, to Cuba, you know, mm -hmm. he was amazed when he went to the Biotechnology mm -hmm. Institute to see what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So in terms of healthcare system, the Cuban Revolution has accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. They are in you know, educational facilities, probably one of the best in South America. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, education is free in Cuba, you know, from elementary mm -hmm. to university. Mm -hmm. So they have probably the highest literacy rate in the Western mm -hmm. Hemisphere, mm -hmm. even higher than mm -hmm. ours here, mm -hmm. yeah, about 90. About 99 percent, or 99, yeah, mm -hmm. about 99.9 percent in the literacy rate in, in Cuba. So that's that's a gangatron accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the failures, mm -hmm. you know, of the Cuban Revolution? We can say, you know, human rights uh, in, in 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 countries, you know, that uh, dictatorship like Cuba is, mm -hmm. you know, people don't have the rights to say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the right to publish what they want to, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the newspapers, radio are controlled by the government. You know, the largest newspaper, you know, grandma is communist, you know, mm -hmm. are controlled. Uh, people don't have the right to go to wherever they want to, when they want to. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just say, well, I'm going to the airport, have an <laughs> airport, I'm going to the United mm -hmm. States. No, mm -hmm. you can just, you know, the government mm -hmm. won't allow you to do that. They want to make sure where you're going mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. and give you a pass to go and come back, you know. So some of those things are the human rights situation. Jobs, you can just get up, say, well, I want to go and change my job. I got to be working at TSU, no more at uh, mm -hmm. Fisk. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. The government controls the economy. Okay. About 95, 96, 97 percent of the economy is government controlled. Mm -hmm. And that's where we come to one of the most important earth-shattering you know, news about Cuba. Mm -hmm. When Fidel got sick, you know, he handed over to his brother and a group of those around him, you know, officially. Mm -hmm. If Raul took over on February 8th, you know, last year as, as president of Cuba. What has happened since then is that they started looking at the economic downturn in the world. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, no, 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 no. We have 5.1 million mm -hmm. employees in Cuba. That's the government workforce, mm -hmm. point, 5.1. Raul and his advisor say, no, we can't keep this up. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people just sitting eating, mm -hmm. not doing anything, but so we are paying them. Part on the government yeah, payroll. Yeah, the government payroll. Mm -hmm. This is too much. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have to survive, they have got to do, make some dramatic changes. So he announced that one million government workers would be laid off. Mm -hmm. You know, and 20 percent of the work. Exactly about that. And 10 percent of them would be laid off from now until March 11th next year. They've started already. Half a million will be laid off from now till March next year. So what they want to do is lay off about this one million within a year, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, have them find jobs in the private sector. So in, to accomplish that, 
some of the areas that the government had been controlling, okay. you know, they are relaxing now. You know, you can start your own barber shop, you can start your own barbecue shop, mm -hmm. you can start your own, you know, uh, ga car garages, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can start your own business in your home, all that. Not to absorb these these people. Those workers that have been laid yeah, off. That's uh -huh. correct because people, mm -hmm. those who have been laid off, are complaining, say, where where are we gonna get a job from? So they are trying to now create those kind of uh, mm -hmm. you know private enterprises so that these people can be able to find you know jobs in the private sectors. And of course, you know the dangers. You know when you start having private sector jobs, people start getting a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Trouble starts. And that's why the government has always, most communist governments, mm -hmm. reluctant, you know, for people to have okay, their own individual uh -huh. business so they don't accumulate money to start, you know, and they can challenging. do a lot with that money that they accumulate <laughs> in business. And, uh, exactly, start challenging the government. the government. That's, itself. that's yes. correct, mm -hmm. undermine the government. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so that's the fear. So that's what they want to do is slowly to see how it works out. You know, if people are going to be comfortable working in the private sector after so many years mm -hmm. of sitting, you know, with, with government pay. Mm -hmm. The doctors, some of the doctors are paid less than the janitor, mm -hmm. you know. But now Raul says, no, we got to start paying people according to mm -hmm. their work mm -hmm. and their productivity. Mm -hmm. No more just, you know, because you are a driver, truck driver, we pay you more than a nurse in the hospital. We mm -hmm. can't do that anymore. We we'll get to people according to their qualification, mm -hmm. so we can have the best people mm -hmm. stay in Cuba and work, you know, which is not a bad idea, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's yet to be seen. I know, you know, though this new, you know, changes mm -hmm. going on in Cuba is attracting a lot of attention. You know, people, some people say, well, Fidel Castro is against it, you know, but. You know, if he was against it, his brother wouldn't have done it anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though he's sick, you know, like he's been in the hospital, he's no more in charge, he's not the president. But he's still the chairman of the Communist Party mm -hmm. of and Cuba. And has that influence. Yeah, mm -hmm. and since he's the communist chairman of the Communist Party of Cuba, he's still the person in charge. Mm -hmm. Because you can't be president or anything in Cuba if you're not a member mm -hmm. of the Communist, communist Party, party. Mm -hmm. which he is the chairman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even though his brother is the president, Mm -hmm. He can still remove. Well, know. now we're talking about what? What about over the last couple of minutes? What about the United States' relationship with Cuba? I think we uh, uh, well, can. Do we see any improvement since that? Since, since, since uh, President Obama came to office, you know, he has done some things to relax. You know, some of those now Americans can go and visit. Mm -hmm. You know, their relatives. You know, in Cuba, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of uh, you have a lot of Cubans living in Miami mm -hmm. or some of these places mm -hmm. who we are not allowed to even go there. Now they, they can, you know, and other Americans are allowed to go to Cuba now. Uh, they allow more people to send money mm -hmm. to Cuba, which, you know, before it was, there was a very big, you know, obstacle to doing that. Mm -hmm. So more money going to Cuba now, more people visiting Cuba now, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the little openings that Obama mm -hmm. has, has done. But what is, mm -hmm. a lot of people are calling for the embargo to end, mm -hmm. which is supposed to, because most of the countries that you know broke off relations with Cuba before, particularly mm -hmm. in Latin America, all of them have renewed diplomatic relations. All of them. Mm -hmm. And lot. so we still refuse to trade with Cuba. Is that what? It, That's uh -huh. correct. We are still even though the rest of the world appears to be trading with trade Cuba. Trade exactly. You know, we refuse to still trade with and them. Now, what, what, what's the major reason for that, though, Doc, uh, Doctor? Drew? It's still. Uh, I don't think any of the presidents mm -hmm. has the political will to say, "Hey." Let's end this here. Mm -hmm. You know, they go halfway and they stop. You know, when Carter came in, he made some noises about ending it, then he stopped. Obama is coming now, mm -hmm. made a some noises, but still trading very slowly. Will it be to our it advantage is. or to Cuba's advantage for us to do that? I mean, who, who it, would win? It will be to both sides' advantage. Mm -hmm. Because what people don't understand, the more this embargo stays on, the more really indirectly we are propping up the Castro regime. Mm -hmm. Because whatever is happening in Cuba, even if people are starving, oh, Raul say, hey, it's those people in Washington. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't have food mm -hmm. because so of this embargo. We can't import anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we had allowed, you know, trade to continue, I doubt if, if the Castro and his brother would be in power today mm -hmm. because people have been seeing a lot and agitating. Mm -hmm. But since we just closed the island mm -hmm. up, 
Every problem there is, is Americans. Mm -hmm. Every problem is That's Americans. That's why we have such bad reputation. Exactly. <laughs> There's no cars running mm -hmm. in Cuba. Oh, it's mm -hmm. America. Even though it's, it, we are not responsible. <laughs> yeah. If somebody doesn't have a house, oh, it's Americans. That's mm -hmm. why we don't have cement to build house. Mm -hmm. You know, all those complaints. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so they're using that mm -hmm. embargo to keep power. And of course, Dr. Duke, uh, we have to stop, as you know, uh, at this particular point. But I certainly thank you. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.